Hello guys, hello and welcome to the Monster Gym Studio. My name is Peterson Charles, bodybuilder, personal trainer, fitness enthusiast. Guys, today I have the complete score sheets of the 2020 Mr. Olympia, which I'm going to share with you guys. I'm going to share with you guys, I'm going to show you guys the finals of the Mr. Olympia. And I'm also going to show you guys the, the score sheet of the Classic Physique. For those of you who thought that it was close, it was not even close, guys. If it's your first time here, guys, please subscribe to the channel. And please hit that notification bell so you guys can be notified when I drop another video. I'm going to get everything organized for you guys. And in the meantime, I'm going to leave you guys with some music while I get everything organized. And I'm going to show you guys everything that you guys need to know as far as the score goes. All right. So just hold tight. All right, guys, so now that I have everything organized, I'm going to show you guys the score sheet. I'm going to explain to you guys in detail. All right, so don't go anywhere. We are here. All right, so first off, Big Rami. If you guys don't know how bodybuilding is squad, the higher your score is the lower your place. Okay? And, uh, the lower your score, it's the highest. It's sort of like golf. So, okay. So, Big Ramy, prejudging, he scored seven. That's on Friday. Night show, he scored five. So, I guess he tightened up a lot. So, so total score was 12. So, for those of you who thought that Brandon and Ramy was close, now we, we, we will see for sure. Now, second place, Brandon Curry. Prejudging, Rami still had him by one point less, meaning that even if Rami was not at his best, he was still ahead, guys. Still ahead by one point. What does that tell you? Now, night show, did Brandon got worse? Saturday night? I didn't see it that way, but th th that's the reason why. That's why they are judges. I'm not. Okay? I have eyes for the game because I've been in the game for 30 years. Uh, you know, I'm a former competitor, so I know, you know, more or less what they're looking for. But then again, you just never know. So if you guys thought it was close, it wasn't. So they're trying to say that Brandon got worse. I mean, Saturday night. I don't see it that way. So clearly, Rami was way ahead of the game. Okay, uh, third place, guys. How did you, how did, how did you plan? 15. 15 at prejudging on, on Friday and 14, 14 points Saturday night. So did he get better? I think he did, but he's always in shape. This guy, he, he was actually the most conditioned guy in the show, which is the most conditioned. I want, uh, Brandon, it's like apples and oranges. Brandon has a prettier physique. He's more aesthetic. His body flows so nice, but Hattie is just pure conditioner. He has a pretty shape too, but it's not as flawless as as, uh, as Brandon. So, but anyway, he took third, and which was a good placement for him. Now I have a problem with Hunter Labrador. Hunter Labrador, 20 at prejudging, 20 final shows, 20 at the finals. I have a real issue with that. Because to me, at prejudging, he held a lot of water. And Saturday night, yes, he tightened up. So clearly nothing changed there. So he came forward, okay? Fifth. Fifth was Nick Walker, okay? And for those of you who thought it was close between uh, Hunter Labrador and Nick Walker, like I said, we're going to we're gonna compare it. We're going to compare Hunter Labrador in the morning, prejudging, Friday. He was ahead of Nick Walker. I don't see where. Personally, I don't see where. The guy was holding so much water. What, based on shape? I don't know. At night, we could, we could make this argument at night that he was in better shape than he was on Friday. 
Saturday night at the finals, he was in better shape because he, you know, dried up a little bit. But clearly, they all, they had him from the get go. They had a uh, Hunter brother ahead of Nick Walker. Like I said, I don't see why. And at finals, on fi finals, Saturday night, guys. Saturday, they actually had Nick Walker worse than prejudging. And to me, Nick Walker looked a lot better at you know finals than prejudging. So. Then again, he came fifth. Uh, the other next guy I want to talk about, guys, is sixth place, William Bonac. William Bonac, <laughs> I mean, was supposed to compete at the Arnold Classic. Point. Guy in every show. Uh, compared, I think, quarantine. I think uh, the quarantine time, you know, he didn't really have enough time. So he missed the Arnold Classic. But... People, people were saying that he would have beaten Nick Walker, and clearly it didn't happen because they had a you know, chance to battle it on stage. So uh, clearly, Nick Walker beat him. So guys, let's put that to rest. Bonac, Bonac legs is not as they used to. I think he suffered some type of injury as well because his legs is downsized a little bit. So, And his abdominal region, it, it was never his strong point. It looks the same. So, But one thing I can tell you guys, after looking at Nick Walker midsection, guys are going to kill their midsection because a lot of guys think it's a joke. They decide, oh, we're not going to work our abdominals. We're only going to work our abs when we are cutting for a show. But you can clearly see that Nick Walker been putting in work off-season or not because his abs are very deep. And another point I want to draw to you guys. All the Arab guys, what do they have in common? Can I hear? Abdominals. Those guys are killing the abdominals. They are working their abs so hard. This is the reason why they have really good abs and most of them have good legs as well. But the abdominal region is the center of your body. This is the first thing that people's eyes are drawn to when you stand in front facing them. And the Arabs figured that out years ago because you can look at old videos and one thing they all have in common Great mid section. Okay, guys. So get to work, guys. Work your abs. Okay, another one that I was kind of surprised. Uh, Regan Grimes. Regan Grimes. I mean, I feel so bad for this guy because he's 15. Last year he placed dead last, and this year he, he was all about putting putting on size, which he managed to do. But clearly he's too small. He has great structure as well, small waist, but um, he's too small and he's just too small. He need more time. I feel bad for him because he showed pick side by side how we changed so much from last year. But when you put this, when you put him next to the top guys, he seems to just disappear. You know, those guys are so huge. You know, another guy that really uh, caught my attention was was Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore made the top ten a couple of years ago, and now he's 14th what happened again lack of size doesn't have enough size the game has changed doesn't have enough size guys feel bad for him too because he spent his whole time working trying to get massive which he did he looks good alone but when you put him next to two guys i mean they just overshot overpower him it's just yeah there's another guy that i want to talk about another new guy james Hollins had UK won the British Grand, P Grand Prix last year. He was the first guy to qualify for Mr. Olympia 2021. Great physique on this guy. Great condition. He's a massive guy. But then again, the midsection, it looked non-existent compared to the other guys. It looked like he don't even work his abs. He don't even touch him. I, I guess he, he, you know, he think that his diet will work for him as far as getting your midsection. Do we all have abs? Yes, we do. But you still got to work them. And it shows. It looked just washed out. It looked like it, there was there, no abs there. So, Mr. James, you got, you got work to do, man. Nick Walker showed a lot of people up when it comes to that midsection. I mean, a lot. Okay, so. Uh, my boy, Akim Williams. Uh, what can I say? He was six last year. And... Um, it's just, I don't know, man. He's ninth. He plays ninth. 
I don't know what they're looking for in Akim Williams. I mean, people can only talk about his back. It's not, you know, it's not where it needs to be. But I mean, everybody in this on this bodybuilding stage had flaws. Rami legs were not separated either. Not like 2020. Akim legs are separated. Nobody talks about that. So, like I said, it's it's just I'm not a judge, but I can only you know what I can see in front of me. I mean, you have to give and take, but to put him at ninth place, well, like I said, I'm not a judge. And uh, him to uh, Hassan Mustafa competed so many times. He came 13th out of the top 10. He need to take a t he need to take some time off. His body's tired. The muscle is not responding. He's one of the biggest guys out there, but. He just can't get into condition. He's working with Chris Acido, the technician. And if the, the technician can bring him in, nobody else will. He needs some time off so that his muscle can replenish, recuperate, and then he can start hitting it hard again. There's another guy really. Oh, yeah, this guy. Mohamed Shaban, Egypt. Place 10. I'm proud of this guy. This guy competed in four shows this year. Actually, he got his Olympia qualification on points and made the top 10. He's another guy with great wills like Big Rami. But again, his conditioning was not on point. Give him a few years, guys. If he has good conditioning, a lot of people at the top will go down. So, proud of him. Ian Valier, I don't know why they put him at 7th place. I don't know. A very cool guy. But seven, I don't think he deserves seventh place. We got, we're going to leave it there, right, guys? Now, what do you guys really want to see? You guys want to see the classic physique, huh? Okay. Okay, first, if you guys thought that Chris Bumstead, Terrence Ruffin, and Brian Ansley were close, not even close. Mr. Classic Physique himself, Chris Bumstead, Chris Bumstead, he scored five. Okay? Like I said, the lower the score, the higher you place. Five points. So let's see the difference between Chris Bumstead and Terrence Ruffin. Terrence Ruffin scored 10. That's why he came second. 10, that's why he plays second, I repeat. Now, Terrence Ruffin beat Chris Bumstead. I'm sorry, Terrence Ruffin beat Brian Ansley by one point. Last year, right? Now. He came second again, so it was a repeat of last year. The top three, same, nothing changed. But let's see if he stretched that lead. Where is he? Brian Ansley. Brian Ansley, 18. So that's a stretch, guys. So... I mean, Brian Ansley didn't just get beat, he got whooped. Okay, guys, and like I, I told you guys before, Brian Ansley will never win a classic physique show again. He, it's done for him, guys. Such a cool guy, great poser, great physique, very balanced. The problem that's killing him, guys, is his height to weight ratio, okay? He has to literally starve to make weight in order to compete in that division. All right, guys, whereas Mr. Chris Bum said, Mr. Classic Physic himself, he's 6'1". He's like 235, 240 pounds, and, the, and his weight limit is 245. He can actually put on more size. It spells trouble for everyone in that division. He has that height, and the taller you are, the more you can weigh. So like I said, and Terrence has to literally suffer. I take my advice to Terrence. My channel is very small. But please, guys, like this video so it can go up in the algorithm. Algorithm, uh, Brian Ansley can see it. He should go to the 212 division. At least he won't have to suffer and lose all the size. Could you imagine you put yourself through the ringer, put on uh, 10 pounds of muscle a year, and you have to diet everything off to fit in a class? It's like it's just a waste of time. He lose all that play in his legs. Now his legs are very straight because he literally have to suffer to make weight. It's, it's just... Bodybuilding is about building the body. It's not losing muscle. And this is exactly what he's doing. Every year he's he losing muscle. So he really has to think and plan exactly what he wants to do, which I think he should go to the 212. At least he will get to keep what he worked for in the offseason. Right, guys? 
Uh, there's another big surprise of, of the show that really caught my attention. I think this guy's from Germany. Yeah. Urs. Oh, this guy. <laughs> Between him and Brian, it was close. I mean, from 18 to 22. He came fourth. So to be that close, which means there was a judge that had Brian in fourth, guys. There was a judge that had Brian in fourth. Just saying. But this guy, he has a great future in the classic physique division. Uh, there was a guy from Brazil as well. That did really well. He came fifth. Ro Raymond. This guy has a great... I mean, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Chris Bumstead. Match Chris Bumstead on the size, but not the shape, though. He came fifth. Um, I was very disappointed in the way that they treated Wesley Visus. I'm a subscriber to his channel. Very cool guy. And I'm not saying this, that's, that's the reason why he should have placed higher. But um, he placed exactly the same that he did last year. 11th. And he's much improved from last year. What happened? Do they not like his physique? He made such huge improvement. From last year. This year, I've been following him training in Mexico and getting ready for the Olympia because he flew out to Mexico, I guess, a week prior or two weeks prior so that he can get ready for the Olympia so that he doesn't have to have any uh, restrictions and all that. And he's, been, he's a very cool guy, but I think he deserved to place higher. I mean, he placed exactly the same that he placed last year. Uh, another big surprise, uh, Robert Thames. Robert Timms, I mean, best back in the business. Talk about conditioning. He's a taller guy, too. He can stand next to Chris Bumstead and actually blow Chris Bumstead away when it comes to the back shot. It's very uh, crisp. Condition is on point, but the legs. He's really slice, guys. Most, one of the most conditioned guys at the show. But then again, his legs. And remember, he's an Air, he's a, he's an Air Force pilot, and he also had cancer in his, in his knee, guys. So give the guy a lot of credit for I mean, battling this and still top 10 at the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia. But I really think that he should place higher, guys. Uh, there was another guy that kind of disappointed. He has a great physique as well. Yeah, I so said they all have great physiques, right? But this guy actually is special. Um, where is he? Where is he? Brian Jones. Brian Jones was fifth last year and he came nine this year which is a uh, i mean his place in is where it should be guys his condition and just it just wasn't there at least not as good as, as last year so he got work to do uh this is not a guy alex where's alex where's alex 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 cambro nero from costa rica runner up at Arnold classic two weeks prior and uh, again, he placed six at the 2021 Mr. Olympia. So I don't know what he should do. He's very refined. Not the biggest guy, very refined. But uh, he's, he just looked too small for his height. And uh, compared to the other guys, when he stands next to the other guys, that's where he get, gets exposed. He's always in crisp conditioning, but nothing pops. There's no wow factor on him. And this is the reason why he will do good at the Arnold, but he won't do that well at the Mr. Olympia because, you know, the Mr. Olympia is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding, guys. So, so there you have it, guys. Uh, this was my breakdown on the, the scorecards. I hope you guys, on the score sheets, I hope you guys um, really, really enjoyed the video. I did my best to bring you guys, you know, what I know, what I have right in front of you guys. You guys can watch the video again and go through it and see for yourself why this guy's place where they did. Like I said, it was never, never, it was never close between Brian and, and Ruffin. All right, guys. So guys, thanks again for joining me. And don't forget guys to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you guys can be notified when I drop another video. Uh, my next video will be, I'm going to show you guys videos of the posing routine and what I think. And, you know, so I have a lot of content for you guys. I'm kind of busy right now because I'm a casino controller. I work at night in the casino and, you know, I try to 
juggle everything. I make my videos at night too when I come from work. So I, I try my best to update you guys as much as I know. All right. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. And remember, guys, intense is how we train. Bye, guys. Peace.